morning, boys and girls. Happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are doing really great today. I hope you are getting to enjoy doing all sorts of wonderful things. Here it's been really hot lately. Yesterday was really, really, really hot. But today is not going to be so bad. And this week also, boys and girls, this Sunday, it's a special holiday called Mother's Day. So, if you happen to have a mother or somebody who's like a mother in your life, it might be good to make them a card or something this week. And today we're going to be reading two books. We're going to be reading The Pout Pout Fish. And we're going to be reading Nobody Hugs a Cactus. I like both of these books. Both of these books are really funny. I think maybe we'll begin today with The Pout Pout Fish. So this is called The Pout Pout Fish. And it's written by a lady by the name of Deborah Dyson. And pictures by Dan Hanna. And today, the theme for today, both of these books are... They're both of these books, the main character in them isn't quite so happy in the beginning. He isn't quite so cheerful. He's a little bit grumpy. But by the end of it, he sort of comes out of it. And that's okay. It's okay to be a little bit grumpy every now and then. I know if you're having to spend a lot of time at home with your brothers and sisters or with your big people, maybe, maybe you get a little bit grumpy yourself. That's okay. It's okay to be grumpy, but don't be grumpy all the time. So, today we're going to do little books about being grumpy and about coming out of being grumpy too. Okay, so the first fish, or the first book, <laughs> the first fish, the first fish is about a book. The first book is about a fish. The first book is about a fish called the Pow Pow Fish. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. Look at his face. He's not happy. He's not happy. He's just going along pouting. I like this picture. Because there's all sorts of really creative looking fishes in it. I really like it. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread dreary weary all over the place. Bleh. 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 Each time, it's like he's big, he, he blubs himself down into almost like a flat pancake. <laughs> I like that, that's pretty funny. Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and with a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down, says the fish to his friend. Nice thought, Mrs. Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. I like this. I like these little, these little worms that are sticking up. I think they're kind of cool. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread dreary wearies all over the place. You'll notice that's what he says each time. That's like his, his catchphrase. I spread dreary wearies all over the place. Blub. 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 Along comes a jellyfish. He floats through the ocean. His tentacles are trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet me or greet us with a grimace and a growl. 
says the fish to his friend. Well, Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. You know what's coming. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread gray wearies all over the place. This time, boys and girls, if you want to, you can do the blubs with me. The first blub, it's short. The second blub is even longer. And on the third blub, just blub as long as you can. Blub. 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 <laughs> Along came a squid, quite a slender, squiggly sight. She is squirmy, she is squelchy. She is slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope of mope. <laughs> I like that, that's really funny. You kaleidoscope of mope. How about a smile, a little joy, a little hope? Says the fish to his friend. Mrs. Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look, you'll see why. You know what's coming. Cause I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread really worries all over the place. Do it with me. Blub. 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 Along comes an octopus with eight great arms covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell you, let me tell it to you straight. You're a hokey, bokey, soaking. Your hokey, bokey, soaking is an unattractive trait says the fish to his friend. Mr. Eight, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I am destined to be glum. You know why? Cause I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. I spread dreary wearies over the place. Blub, blub. Something new is happening. Now along comes a fish and a silent silver shimmer. This game has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, Hey! She plants a kiss upon his pout, and then she swims away. See? He's just sitting there in his little blub. She comes along and gives him a little kiss. Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just aghast. He is stone-faced like a statue. Then he blinks and he speaks at last. My friend, my friends, says Mr. Fish. I should have known it all along. I thought I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. Oh, what do you think's gonna happen? Do you think he's gonna get happy? Do you think he's gonna change? Do you think he's not gonna be pout-pout anymore? 
Let's look and see. I'm a kiss kiss fish with a kiss kiss face for spreading cheery cheery all over the place. Look at him. He's so happy now. Look, he doesn't have a pout pout. He has a cheery cheery face. So I'll smooch, 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 smooch. to change the way he did things. You can change the way you do things too. If there's something that you don't like, if people are telling you, quit being so pow pow, quit being so down in the dumps, it's up to you, you can change it. You can do something different if you really want to. So that was the pow pow fish. And boys and girls, we had two different crafts for today. And our two different crafts, the first one is the same craft that Cindy did last time. You guys might recognize this one. Since we're doing a book over the cactus, we have the little cactus craft. So here, these are the little rocks that we got outside and we just painted them to look like cactuses or cacti. They're pretty cool. Cindy did a really good job with these. Or we also have the one with googly eyes. You know how I love googly eyes. This one, you know. And the eyes go everywhere. And Crystal, Crystal also made a really cool cactus. And if you want to watch the video that we have posted on Facebook, you can see how she made it. This one is really cool. So this one is, uh, what we like to call a hand craft. So you can see it's just a hand. She she cut out her, she traced her hand, she cut it out, and then she made a, uh, a nice little bowl and a nice little dish for the bowl. So here we go. And then she decorated it up with a bunch of little flowers. She did a really good job. It's really cool. It's very creative. Maybe you could make some sort of little craft for your mom for Mother's Day. Or for the person in your life who's like your mom. Okay, and next time, boys and girls, for our next video, we're gonna have two different books. And these books are going to be about monsters. But they're not about normal type of monsters. They're not about where the wild thing grows monsters. This one is about a monster truck. This one's pretty cool. This one's called Little Monster Trucks Go! By Doug Senko. And this one, so this one is about monster trucks who have a race. And this one, it's kind of sort of about monsters. But it's about monsters that were once real. Really, really, really big lizards. They're really, really, really big, cool dinosaurs. If you're like me, you like dinosaurs. This one is called, What Kind of a Car Does a T-Rex Drive? And this one, there's a bunch of dinosaurs that go to a car dealership, and they try to find something for them to drive around in. It's really, really funny. And the, in this one, the illustrations are really, really cool. That's, for me, I like the story. I think the story's cool. But I really like the drawings. I think the drawings are really cool. So, tune in next time for that. That'll be on Friday. And now, now we will read Nobody Hugs a Cactus. This book is by Carter Goodrich. The thing that makes this book so funny is I really like the expressions on the cactus's face. The cactus seems really, really, like has some really funny, really creative sort of expressions on his face. 
nobody hugs a cactus. Hank lived in a pot. The pot sat in a window. The window looked out at an empty desert. It was hot, dry, peaceful, and quiet. Just the way that Hank liked it. There he is. So he's Hank, and he's a cactus. And I like how they make his little cactus needles into hair. That's pretty creative. But every now and then, somebody would interrupt Hank's peace and quiet. Hi, Hank! Rosie to the tumbleweed called out. Isn't it a beautiful day? Hank ignored her. He just wanted to be left alone. <laughs> I love these drawings. These little tumbleweed. And look at his arms. He's crossing his arms like, leave me alone. <laughs> I love the expression on his face. He's such a pow pow. said Rosie cheerfully and she tumbled away. Hank was happy again. <laughs> he has his arms out, he's like, mm, this is so nice. <laughs> and to me, Rosie, she kind of looks like a, the tumbleweed, she kind of looks like a little Pac-Man. I think she kind of looks like a little bitty Pac-Man very creative. But, just as he was beginning to relax, oh! shouted a tortoise. To me, I, tortoises or turtles can live a really, really long time, so I wanted to make this one into a little old man. Give him a little old man, boys! Can you do a little old man voice? Can you go, hello? Private property, yelled Hank. Keep out. The tortoise was so frightened, he hid in his shell. <laughs> Look at him. He has his little arms up like, like he's trying to like make the noise bigger. And that poor tortoise he just went back in his shell. Poor dude. Hank was still yelling at the tortoise when a jackrabbit dashed by. Hiya, prickles! She shouted. My name isn't Prickles, Hank yelled back, and stay out of my yard! <laughs> he's getting so mad that like, he's, he's moving and his pot is even moving. I like that, that's really funny. Hiya, Prickles! <laughs> And this is like the stereotypical what you would see on a lot of a lot of cartoons and stuff. Stay out of my yard! It's really funny. Tumbleweeds, tortoises, jackrabbits. What's next? Said Hank. There he is. He's just getting madder and madder. Look at him. What's next? <laughs> Coyote came lopping along. No dogs allowed! Uh, I'm not a dog, said the coyote, and you are as prickly on the inside as you are on the outside. I like the coyote, the coat is really well done. He's kind of blondish looking. I think that's pretty creative.
And that poor, oh, did you notice the poor tortoise hasn't even came out of the shell yet? He's still scared. Poor dude. Before Hank could yell back at the coyote, a cowboy strode past. Keep off the grass, shouted Hank. What grass, said the cowboy. Seems to me somebody needs a hug. Too bad nobody hugs a cactus. <laughs> and I like it. He's just kind of long and lanky, kind of just strolling past. Nobody hugs a cactus. <laughs> And that tortoise is still there. I like that he has, you can see he has little spurs. And it's a really creative looking picture. Hi! Hi! Said a lizard. Who invited you? Said Hank. And just in case you're wondering, I don't want a hug. That's good, said the lizard, because I don't want to give you one. Then he skittered away. <laughs> I don't want to give you one. An owl landed on the roof. If you're looking for a hug, said Hank, well, I guess I could give you one. Look at that. He's slowly changing his mind. Somebody said, hey, you're pretty cranky. You need a hug. Then he started to think about it more and more. He thought, maybe, maybe I do need a hug. said the owl, you must be joking. And for the first time, Hank began to feel a little lonely. Oh, poor Hank, look at him. Before he was all frowny, before he was all mad, and now he just looks sad. Poor guy, he's holding his arm out like, come back. Poor guy. The next morning, Hank was feeling more sad on the inside than prickly. Maybe a hug wouldn't be so bad after all. <laughs> He's just sitting there thinking, maybe I do need a hug. Look over there, you can still see the tortoise. He went in that shell and he ain't coming out. He's not coming out. The wind began to pick up. An old cup blew by and stuck to Hank's face. His arms were too short to get it off. Great, said Hank. <laughs> It reminds me of that, that thing on Meet the Robinson where, where you have the uh, the T Rex and he's like, My arms are too short. Reminds me of that. Really funny. And oh, look, look, look. He uh, looks like the tortoise shell is kind of blown away. He's still on the inside, he still doesn't want to come out. After a while, Rosie came bouncing by. I'll get it off you, Hank, she shouted, and she jumped up to knock the cup off Hank's face. Then she tumbled away.
There's the cup. The cup is off to the basement. Let's see what happens next. Hank didn't have time to thank Rose. He felt bad about all the other times he'd been rude to her. So, he came up with a plan. He wasn't very nice to her before. Now he's sitting back thinking, maybe I should have been nice. Do you ever have that when you're not very nice to people? Then you think, maybe I should have been nicer. It's okay, you can always apologize. You can always start over. Hank decided to grow the best flower he could and then to give it to Rosie as a thank you gift. It took days, but at last it was ready. He couldn't wait for Rosie to pass by again. He looks very different now. His little frown isn't there anymore. He grew this little flower for his friend. When, at last, she finally did come bouncing back, Hank held out the flower. Look, Rosie, I grew it just for you. There she is, and there he is, holding out the flower. He's so happy. And I like on the tumbleweed. <laughs> It's really creative. I said it kind of looks like Pac-Man, but they also, they gave, they gave her a little eye. They gave her little eyelashes and stuff. I think it's very creative. It's a very simple drawing, but it's very creative. Rosie was so surprised. She jumped up and gave Hank a great big hug. It felt so nice. Hank didn't want to let go. And as things turned out, he couldn't. Rosie and Hank became stuck together because he was a cactus, she was a tumbleweed. So there they go. But they're both very happy. You can see she has a really nice, granted he looks completely different than before. But they didn't care. After all, it's better to be stuck in a hug than stuck all alone. There they are. They're stuck in the hug. And oh, look over there. Now that he's a happy guy, now that he's a cheerful guy, he's a lot nicer to people. And the tortoise even felt safe walking around. Okay, boys and girls, that's the end. I hope you liked this book as much as I did. I loved it because it had a really good message about being nice, about whenever you're nice, people will naturally be attracted to you. People will will want to be your friend. And it also had a really cool drawing. The guy who did this book was very creative. It's a very cool and inventive sort of idea. And this cactus, he had a frown at the beginning, but he had a smile at the end. So whenever you do your cactus, you can make him with a frown, you can make him with a smiley face. You can do whatever you want with him. And please, please share your crafts in the little comments down below. I would love to see all the cool, creative stuff you guys have been coming up with. I'd really like to see it. Cool. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And until then, just keep reading. Bye.